Rich Froney, if he scores 164 points, there's nothing anybody do, can do to catch him, and he will be the champ once again. The third and final heat of the 12th and final event of the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games underway. Back-to-back -back events. The Cinco 1, worth 100 points. The what? Cinco 2, worth 100 points as well. What you'll see with these guys is how they're going to attack the deadlift. Almost all of these guys are extremely strong athletes, have well over 500-pound deadlifts. Going through those deadlifts unbroken, you'll see a couple of them every once in a while will go singles, but this movement right here, we've never seen a weighted pistol in the CrossFit Games ever. We've seen pistols, but now these guys are actually holding on to a 53-pound kettlebell and having to go down into that single leg squat. Right now in lane two, it's Marcus Hendren with one more one-legged squat to go. He is currently in the lead, and Hendren is done, and he will start on round two. Marcus Hendren out of the Central East region. They sent five men from that region to the CrossFit Games. Four of them are here in the final heat. You know, and he just slipped in. He was fifth coming out of that region. That's kind of a tough place to be because you're thinking, like, should I really have gotten in here? Well, I'll tell you what, he's had an unbelievable CrossFit Games, and he's showing right now to this crowd that he definitely deserves to be here and wants to put a mark on his name and say, guess what, I'm here to stay. Rich Groning, Garrett Fisher, Marcus Hendren, Z.A. Anderson, all battling for the top spot as it's back and forth here in the Cinco One. The time to beat belongs to Lucas Parker out of Canada West. 429.9. Now you see these guys holding on to the kettlebells out in front. That's called basically a goblet squat. Most people do it with two legs. These guys have to do it with one. But right there, Scott Panchik actually decides to hold it off to the side. Again, it's, it's a balance and a comfort level. What works best for them? So you're going to see varying, varying positions with that kettlebell. Rich Froning currently in the lead. He's through eight repetitions on his second round of one-legged squats. Now here comes Ben Smith pushing him for the lead. And now Froning onto his third round of deadlift at 405 pounds. Jason Kaliba, meanwhile, on the right is struggling. He's been getting no reps. Couple reasons why that can happen. That's right, either one, you don't get below parallel that hip crease, but what happens with Jason is his front foot keeps dropping and hitting the ground. So it looks like he was actually starting to get fatigued a little bit. He should maybe rest just a touch so he doesn't have those no reps. That's a lot of wasted energy. Rich Froning finishing up his third and final round of deadlifts. Now it's on to one final round of one-legged squats. Froning battling the man on your right, Ben Smith, for the lead in this heat. Ben Smith is fourth overall. He's just five points back of rookie Garrett Fisher for the final spot on the podium. These two are, uh, Garrett Fisher and Ben Smith are two young athletes, but Ben Smith has been here so many more times. Garrett Fisher is a rel he's a newcomer, brand new. Ben Smith knows exactly how to compose himself right here. He knows what it feels like to be in that final heat. He's been on the podium before. He really wants to go from fourth to third and get himself back up on the podium for this year. Voting through six, Ben Smith right behind him, trying to keep pace with a two-time defending champion. No rep for Rich Froning on the left there That's as his hit. left foot hit the ground. That's the last thing you want to have when you're this close on an event. Ben Smith looks so solid on those pistols. And now it's Ben Smith. First done with his three rounds of deadlifts and pistols, and Smith right up into the handstand walk as he has to traverse that 80 feet, and Rich Froning is right next to him. Rich Froning, last time they had a handstand walk for distance, was the champion in that skill event, so Ben Smith needs to stay up there. He can't afford to come down, especially with the champ on his tail. Smith showing no signs of slowing down, but here comes Rich Froning who can win this event if he keeps this pace, and he is going to crush the time to beat. Rich Froning, unbroken, and across the finish line. Wow. Start shining the gold medal for wow. Rich Froning. I'll tell you what, that guy is unbelievable. You can't throw anything at this kid that he can't do. Ben Smith is in. Rich Froning now working his way back down the floor to cheer on his fellow competitors. Now Scott panting across the finish line. Ben Smith will finish second overall in this event and collect 95 points. Scott Panchik finishes third with a time of 425.5. He will get 90 points. So Ben Smith can move into the top three here. 
depending on what Garrett Fisher does. And it's looking like Smith will overtake Garrett Fisher for the third spot on the podium. Garrett Fisher is starting to fall behind on those handstands. Obviously, it's a skill. Ben is extremely good at those kind of movements. Maybe Fisher doesn't quite have this skill. He's really having a hard time here. He can feel that third place starting to slip away. As these other athletes are passing him up, that bodes much better for Ben Smith, who's going to have a much higher point total and allow him onto that podium. Jason Khalifa, who came in in second place overall, just finished up. He will now finish sixth overall in this event with a time of 504.2. That is Marcus Hendren. He's across the finish line, so Hendren blocking a time of 517.9. That'll be good for seventh place in this event. And now Garrett Fisher falling further back as he walks his way down on his hands. The last few feet of that 80-foot mat. Dan Bailey just finished, 529.2 for him. Fisher a couple more inches to go. And Garrett Fisher, the man who trains with Jason Khalifa on a regular basis with a time of 540.2. Point two. He will finish in 11th and pick up 65 points. So Ben Smith will now sit in third place overall. But the winner and the man who's setting himself up for another nice payday here in Carson, California, Rich Froning. So these guys had that seven minute time cap that's still just about to finish, and then they'll have one minute to rest. Now I saw some of those athletes actually starting to do some handstand push ups. They want to set that those blocks for them so that when it's their turn to get up there, they're ready to go. They don't want to have to do it on the fly. Two of the bigger athletes in the field still on the floor. That's Chad McKay. McKay is six feet, 225 pounds. He's out of Sydney, Australia. Then at the other end of the floor, it's Z.A. Anderson from Chambly, Georgia. He's 6'1", 215. This is a movement that bigger guys just do not like to see very much. Chad McKay trying to get in inside the seven minute time cap. We have about 15 seconds to go before that happens. There's a one second penalty for every rep. You do not complete the handstand walk counts for one. Crossing the finish line counts for one. Meanwhile, Josh Bridges got left in the dust as he was still deadlifting. So Bridges, a man many thought could push for the top of the podium, will fall way back in the standings. He definitely didn't want to have that happen, but here's a guy who has 425 pounds, and that's almost his one rep max. We saw this last year. Rich Broding just had to avoid a disaster in 2012 to win, and then he came out and won a couple of the final events. And he became the champ. He didn't have any problem here. I tell you what, he, he's like a cobra. He's smooth, but when he needs to strike, the guy strikes. And look at that, an unbroken handstand walk, and definitely showed exactly what that champ has. Broding. Gets the win. 100 points in the standings. Ben Smith finishes second and now sits in third place overall. Jason Kalipa finishes in fourth. Kalipa still in second place. This sold out crowd at the StubHub Center. Watching the final heat of the final event for the men. This is the Cinco 2. That's right. They got three rounds of five muscle ups, five very deep deficit handstand push ups. And then they're going to take that bar, 165 pounds, hold it up overhead, and have to do lunges all the way back across the stadium floor. This is going to do some serious damage to those that have any sort of shoulder issues over the course of this competition. This is shoulder demanding. Rich Froning going through his deficit handstand push-ups. Josh Bridges in lane eight, who had a disappointing finish in the Cinco one. You know he's flying to... through his first set he, of deficit handstand push-ups. He knows he needs to make up for what just happened. Again, that last event was really, really difficult for him. He's the smallest athlete out here. That weight was heavy, but now he needs to make these work in his favor. He's chasing this man right here. And again, Rich Froning. 195 pounds, I mean, he's not a small guy, but he's just so strong, so efficient in his movements. It, 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 you just can't throw anything at this kid. Right there, Josh, look, he looks good on those handstand push-ups. And when you get him to those rings, that's where he's really gonna be efficient. Bridges with one more to go, and he'll hop back on those rings. But meanwhile, Rich Froning is closing the gap with Josh Bridges. Rich Froning just needs to avoid a total disaster here. And it looks like he's challenging for the lead. Josh Bridges back on the rings, and Rich Froning is right behind him. 
the true championness of Rich Froning is even when he needs, even when he doesn't need to do well, he always puts it all out there. That's a true champion. That's a true athlete. And again, he's, it, it, it doesn't matter if it's a skill event, a gymnastic type movement like the, the, the rings like this with the muscle up or the handstands or strength of the, he is impeccable in his movements and is so strong and so powerful. And when I watch him, you could not tell that he just went through another event and he was through 10 events before that. He started on Wednesday. I mean, this guy, every time he gets on a barbell or the rings or whatever, regardless like of how tired he is, it's near perfect every time. Josh Bridges is still in the lead here in the Cinco 2. The time to beat belongs to Lucas Parker, 642.6 seconds. So even though Josh is in the lead right here, what's coming up for him is this bar. So guess what? Josh Bridges weighs 165 pounds. He now has to support his weight overhead, which is 165 pounds, all the way across the stadium. The lunge is not a, a, a difficult movement necessarily, but when you are supporting that weight, having to use your midline to support that weight, he just blasted his shoulders, and he's going to have to support all that overhead with the shoulders. It is an, it is an absolute obliteration on that joint. Rich Froning was in a similar situation at the Central East Regional. Dan Bailey, with his very same bar and the very same loading, on a walking lunge, was out front of Froning. Froning tracked him down and then passed him and then set an event record. He's so calm, so cool and collected. He just, you know, he does, never gets he never gets rattled at all. He's so mature when he's competing like this. He's just so much experience. But again, Josh Bridges is a fighter. He, I mean, you, you, for the size of this guy and the, the abilities that he has, it, it's just incredible. The bar is down for Bridges. Rich Froning showing no signs of slowing down and looks like he's going to overtake Bridges for the lead. And Rich Froning continues his march towards a third straight CrossFit Games Championship. The bar down now for Froning, but he does have the lead. Wow, Josh Bridges actually had to squat clean that to get it up overhead. They're making him step back. So they are really watching their feet. You need to be in a lunge the entire time. They're not going to let you shuffle your feet or get any extra movement. It has to be a lunge. Rich is at the top of your screen. He is currently in first place. Rich Froning has an advantage. He's taller than Bridges. The bar down for Bridges. Rich Froning lunging his way towards the finish line, trying to lock up back to back. First place finishes in the Cinco 1 and the Cinco 2, and his third straight CrossFit Games Championship. The crowd on his feet as the champ chewing up ground. The finish line is within reach. A third straight straight title is within reach. $275,000 within reach for Rich Froning. And Rich Froning is the fittest man on the planet for the third straight year. The fittest man on the planet, embracing his wife and his father and the rest of the people here from CrossFit Mayhem in Cookville, Tennessee. And Rich Froning just did that. He made it a three-peat. How is that possible? It doesn't matter what is thrown at this guy. He is good at everything. And again, look at it. He doesn't even look tired right now. He has enough energy to jump up over the wall, high-five all his fans, and still come back and cheer on everybody else. This guy is unreal. Jason Kalipa, the 2008 CrossFit Games champion, he will finish, and Kalipa will find himself back on the podium with a second-place finish. And this is what CrossFit is all about. The men you compete against very quickly become your biggest fans. So right there, two guys from the same region. They do battle against each other all the time. Now I'm just going to go out and help better. This is how great this guy is. I mean, when you're this good, when you're this good, you really aren't threatened by anything. I, 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 this sport is amazing. The way you are able to go around and cheer on everyone and coach everyone all the way through competition, it is out of control. 30 seconds to go before we hit the seven-minute time cap. 
Rich Froning cheering on his fellow competitors to try and complete this event inside the seven minute time cap. And Froning and Khalifa, the two men that we saw compete against each other in one of the open workouts, they trained together for a little while. Yelling at Scott Panji to not put the bar down. Six seconds to go, five to go in the 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games, two and one. The 2013 Reebok CrossFit Games are history, and Rich Froning has just made history once again.